One of the things that we help clients with here is trust funding. And that's when you are putting assets into the name of a trust um, once a trust has been created. One of the things that we are finding uh, recently is there are a lot of online bank accounts that our clients are using for a variety of reasons. Maybe because it's just easier, maybe it's because they're kind of a watered down account so there's not an, uh, as much administrative costs associated with those, or maybe it's because they're getting a better interest rate um, than an account that they could at a, a regular brick and mortar institution. However, the problem with some of these accounts is they, those institutions do not allow a beneficiary to be placed on that checking or savings or brokerage account. So you have an account in your name, you're not allowed to put a beneficiary on it, and with you die, what happens is that asset is now a probate asset, which means the court now gets to deal with it. Most of the clients in my office want to avoid having their family go through the probate process when they die. So these types of accounts, you kind of have to do a cost benefit analysis on them. Is it giving you enough benefit for you to have the potential of having that asset go through the, a very expensive probate process if something should happen to you? Most of the time for my clients that answer is no and what we end up doing is moving those accounts into an, an institution that does allow having a beneficiary listed on those checking or savings or brokerage accounts. So just make sure as you are doing those online institutions, make sure that they do allow you to put a beneficiary, some kind, sometimes called a transfer on death or TOD, or sometimes called payable on death, POD, on those accounts.